hope you're having a marvelous day but let's get into it so today we're gonna look at qqq and let me tell you something i'm gonna be honest i didn't think technicals were a thing until i started to really look into them and i'm like yo damn this shit actually like that the candles are doing stuff when it touches these technical things that the traders always talk about you know and by the traders i'm not talking about like outside people i want to consider myself as a trader so i can master it as well so traders and trader like people like myself traders and people aspiring to be traders as well but anyways this is something called the ema so this is something i plotted um in around august and then the qqq had touched the ema the 200 ema which is a strong point or a strong catalyst in the market and it literally when it touched it literally crossed it with a red candle right came back touch it again gap down usually the stock or the commodity or the chart can either respect it or literally just take a dump or whatever you can respect it and continue up like the stock market used to do back in like 2020 and 2021 but for right now we're more bearish bias so anytime you hit the 200 ema there's a high possibility that you're gonna be coming right back down but i'm gonna take that off of the chart right now and just show you what we are looking at today right i remember that my platform is my platform that i use is trade the pool because they allow people that trade stocks to get funded the only thing you can only trade like stocks etfs you can't really trade any crypto or anything like that this is mainly if you trade stocks and you want to have access to more money to like finance your skill set and then that will allow you to get to the next level i'm trying to get to the next level so i'm just practicing this is my journal as well and then you can see what it's like on my journey and then you decide if you want to take part in something like this or maybe it's too risky maybe you just want to watch and this is entertainment for you fine i don't care but basically the first trade and this goes top down right I remember the time is London time they're showing here, but I'm in the US, so we're working with the EST, EST time, the Eastern time. So you're minus five from this. So that would mean this trade happened at 9.52. This trade happened at 10.05, right? So at 9.52, I bought a position, I opened a position at QQQ was at 268.41. So let's check it out. QQQ 268.41. At what time? 9.52. So let me see. 9. 9.50. So yeah, with green candles, the opening price is the bottom of the body. The closing price is the top. So... 952 right 952 is probably around here right so that's where i entered i entered around here to the upside and then my catalyst was this this candle this candle is a hammer hammer candlestick let me show you it's a hand hammer candlestick it's something like this All right so when you have a hammer it's technically it's generally bullish right so it's like the bottom it's like the sellers can't push the market down or push the equity or commodity or whatever down with that much strength so whenever the sellers push it down you have buyers come and just push it right back up for some reason and i can't really explain it that well but that's generally a bullish sign so i'm just trying to learn technicals more and then at a later point on the channel i would like to put up the candlestick bible and just go through it for myself to concrete it for me and also to give you exposure to it as well right so 
we have an a hammer right we have a hammer right here we have just about two hammers right so all for the hammer and I know this long wick I just entered I was saying okay I entered with 50 shares to the upside right and then a few seconds later I felt a bit more confident I entered with 50 more shares so at that time I had a hundred shares of QQQ trading and then around 10.05 so let's check out 10.05 10.05 right so I can show you my psychology going through this and trading is mostly about psychology so I entered around here 9.52 right I have that whole gap up I passed this key level that I had drew up earlier with strength and then I'm saying okay we're rejecting again right so we have rejection here this is from um, pre-market so pre-market we had a gap up and then you have a strong rejection down we had strength up and then we have a rejection down at that point I was like okay I'm not taking too much risk just to get this trade off maybe I'm wrong I'll just de-risk the trade right so when it hit around here and that's the point that I began to like lose some money I was like you know what it's not even worth it let me just exit this trade because it doesn't even matter I'm down $15 let me call it you know I won't force it I'm not gonna force a trade at all but so that's when I close that right and then I have another trade here so what I did was I have a buy to open at 26940 with a hundred shares right so take note of that so two six nine four zero two six nine four zero right so let me show you exactly what i did so before all of this was not there you know could i take it that back two six nine four zero Let's take it right but let me show you so this was what was happening right look at this now let me show you so i had this candle this started to form and then i had a big green push i remember i entered on this candle right and then i had a rejection here so i'm like man Maybe I'm wrong. It start to come back down. Start to come back down. And around here. So I didn't even give the trade a chance to play out there. Around here is when I just exited the trade, you know? And then at what's this? 1016. I'd set uh so bear in mind i'm looking at the charts like this at this point this is what my vision looks like at the time of the day because this is today at around 10 right so what i did was i set a level above here and i'm like okay if the market plans to go up because remember i'm still bullish bias um i'll show you why i'm bullish bias after this statement but if the market decides to push up above here I wanted to catch that move I didn't want to be like lacking like I'm not looking and then the market just push past that and I'm like damn I knew it was gonna happen you know so I made sure to set an entry at what 26940 so I set an entry at 26940 just a bit above where the market kept rejecting my rejecting the candles i'm not the only person getting rejected but it definitely feels like it you know but that's where i just decided to just set a stop entry so i could ensure to get into the trade um 27170 so i decided to enter at this point and then i had this as my take profit i had that all set out even before the traders enter 
even before the player even had a chance to play out you know this one is today so we can't count this one but let me show you the reason why people trade technicals is it allows you it gives you more of a quality trade you can kind of have a bias or have a reason why you're entering something versus the news and then the candlestick is also showing you a story so that's what i've been learning and i'm just just trying to learn more you know so i can master this all of this sh stuff you know but basically at a, when you go to a higher time frame you can actually come down you can actually go down and find you can actually go down to you can actually change it to a line and then you will be able to find the key levels better in my opinion in my opinion i'm not a master yet so don't take me for my word but look this was a key level around 271 20 and actually no i'm not even gonna push it i just made sure that i'm grabbing some profits and going right so when i went to the daily i could see that this was a key level right there right there key level so on the five minutes i said okay i'm just gonna set set my target just set it for it to enter at whatever price what was that 26940 so i had it here 26940 so i wanted it to enter here and then i had a take profit there nothing more nothing less so i'm like okay i'm gonna do other things i believe i have the right setup i'm gonna let the trade do its thing i have a stop loss i have a take profit and let's just let it ride you know and that's exactly what it did 271.19 i set it with 0 0.01 of just to make sure that when it got close to that level i'm out i'm making sure that i'm out and then that was 177 dollars and that was within an hour right um so why why am i even bullish bias and this is something you can look up i listen to a lot of analysts on the daily so i know like how people are thinking about the market as much as everybody might not be a professional everybody is spewing like the same thing everybody kind of has an understanding and then that information can circulate back to you it just depends on how you want to interpret it you know so i spend a lot of my time listening to this stuff so i have a better understanding i literally drown myself with it at the same time you know so i can understand it better so basically anytime there's an election or anything like that stocks tend to rally so look stocks tend to rally after midterm elections historical data shows they perform even better when voters deliver divided government so literally if there is like um a democratic party in like the senate and then you have republican in the house stock market loves that like it's gridlock i guess because they can't really pass anything smoothly i'm not sure the exact reason but that's basically a fact that i've learned and then i'm just working with it you know like i see it playing out in the charts i don't have any control over that my mission is just to make money from this you understand so basically that so that's why i'm kind of bullish bias so end time stocks are divided end time the government is decided divided or can't come to a decision the market is gonna rally when you have wars there's a chance that the market is going to fall so that's basically my journal what i wanted to show you the charts and the trading for today um something else that happened today that's very very key and we have to really pay attention to this so ftt do you know ftt don't tell me this these people don't have ftt bro all right let me hit trading view ftt don't tell me they got delisted okay so ftt is ftx's token right ftt is ftx's token and let's look at it like that so 
FTX, FTT has been having a lot of sell pressure, right? Mainly from the Binance, the Binance company. So FTT sold off heavy today, right? And look at the Binance CEO really dropping um, like gems or dropping hints at why the why he sold FTT and why you shouldn't trust anybody that uses currencies like FTT you know so never use a token you created as collateral so something happened today where FTX some investor in FTX kind of showed their books and it really exposed that their books even though it seemed like it had a high value what the value was was really a lot of these coins that they created so essentially they created money and then they were saying the coins are worth this but essentially it's not worth that if nobody's going to buy it from you you know so basically he said don't borrow if you run a crypto business don't use capital efficiency efficiently have a large reserve so you have a large reserve so you can cover your expenses so basically let me show you i'm just gonna go into it uh let me show you just searching his thing ftt so basically you type in a dollar sign ftt and you will see all of their all of the news related to it you know so ftt and binance and we will see exactly exactly because i saw this today and it blew my mind yo uh, binance binance uh, ftt look so binance sold its stake in ftx as part of the bio they agreed to take two billion of it in ftt a token that ftx created that it used for trading fees so now wow so this is what happened So CZ, which is the Binance CEO, came out and says Sam Bankman Fried has been talking about them to regulators lobbying in a way that would hurt Binance. So he announced publicly on Twitter to his 7 million followers that he's going to dump his entire 2 billion FTT stash. Anyone holding FTT knows this is bad news. 2 billion of sell pressure would um, drop the price. So essentially, they had some mis they had some argument, right? The Binance CEO decided to sell FTT or said that he was going to sell. That just causes like cascading sales. So if he actually sold, he sold and then um, somebody got margin call and some people trying to rush out. FTX started to hold up um, withdrawals so people couldn't get their money out. Even that added to more fear. So like as soon as people had the chance they decided to exit as well it all went crazy today and just look at how that affects it so basically basically this was at let me see basically sunday we're looking at a 25 dollar coin today we're looking at a five dollar coin so you lost uh more than 50 percent of your value and then a lot of the CEO of FTX's wealth was held into this coin as well, not into real cash. Who knows? I mean, sometimes you want to be like a faithful coiner or you want to not sell the equity. But really and truly, the smartest people sell their equity. They know when to sell their equity or they have an idea of when might be the best time and not holding on to it to prove to like, 
people that, hey, look, I'm holding on to something even though this might not be the smartest decision. So that's really what happened here. And you can see it really take a hit on the FTT token and the value of it. And then, and then, you know what that might affect as well. It might affect Bitcoin's price. Why? Because there's a high chance that um, the CEO of FTX might sell a lot of Bitcoin just to cover his position or to just re just get back some of his wealth, you know. So this could have been a direct correlation to that. And I believe it has something to do with it because when something happens in crypto, it's like it's all tied in together. A lot of platforms are cross collateralized, you know. So some people borrow against Bitcoin to buy that. Some people borrow USD to borrow Bitcoin to buy that. So it's all cross collateralized, cross collateralized, you know. So basically, that's something that happened today and I found it very interesting and I just wanted to share it with you. Um, with that being said, I'll see you tomorrow. We'll hit the charts and hope you have a good night.